Alright, so Seraphine got released, and I think we can fairly say that there has been a lot of backlash about this. Uh, I don't think all of this is really warranted, to be honest. I mean, I understand some of the criticism, but I, I think it's being overblown. Like, I will probably do some kind of unapologetic uh, defense of Seraphine and defense of Riot, as I usually do. Uh, th that's kind of my thing. I, I like to be the devil's advocate in general. And I like to think that uh, usually people in charge know better than regular people. So here's my two cents about what is really going on and if it really, uh, if it's really as bad as people think. I will not go over uh, her KDA skin. I think that's another issue. I will just talk about uh, her base thematic and her kit. And uh, I leave it to that. So obviously the first uh, big criticism that many people have is that she's basically just Sona V2. And I kind of disagree. I mean, I, I get uh, why uh, you'd think that. And to be fair, thematically, that's pretty much the case, I guess. I mean, uh, we have a second performing artist using music to charm people, uh, even though Sonat doesn't technically have a charm. Uh, I understand <coughs> that on a thematic level, they're pretty much the same. Although in the biography, that's, that's not the same. You know, Seraphine uh, is trying to be a uniter, so someone who unites uh, Piltover and so on. And, I mean, she, she's quite different in that regard from Sona, who basically doesn't really have any kind of lore at that point. Uh, so, lore-wise, they're very different. She's a pop star uh, in Piltover and Zone. And Sana is just uh, an artist, I would say a more classical artist in Dimasia and around the world in general. I mean, they don't have exactly the same feel uh, when it comes to artistry, but yeah, there, there is a big overlap and that I can understand. I think the biggest problem is that Sona is not uh, as clearly defined as she should be. And I think when eventually they go uh, for a VGU on Sona, I think she will be very separate from Seraphine on a thematic level. Like, the biggest difference that we can see, for example, is that Seraphine uh, uses her voice as magic. She, she's a singer. And, well, Sona is literally mute. So in that regard, they're already very different. But yeah, the overarching, the archetype, is pretty much the same. And that I agree. However, when it comes to the abilities, they are only similar on a superficial level. They don't really have much in common for what we can say currently. The, the thing is, we, we have very little information about her actual kit. Like, we have descriptions of her spells, but we don't have anything about them. We don't have cooldowns, we don't have damage, we don't have ratios. We, we don't even know how long... Uh, the CC on our E is or our ultimate. Uh, we have no idea how much of a strong execute that is. So there is a lot going on that is not the same. Like, okay, if we take the passive, for example, yes, Sona and Seraphine both have the three ability cast to have enhanced effects. But first of all, Sona is on her basic attack, and that's not exactly. Same, you know, it enhances her basic attack in different ways. Uh, while Seraphine is just a double cast of her spell. Secondly, uh, once Crescendo, Sona's passive, uh, is up, she can still change it. She can cast another spell and change what the Crescendo effect will be. Whereas Seraphine is stuck with what currently will be a third spell. I mean, she has to, to dispel it on the, la on, on, on the next spell cast. So she cannot really choose uh, when to use it. She has to be careful about how she casts things. So that's already a pretty different thing. Now, the Q, I mean, it was probably a bad idea to have it blue because like, it's exactly the same color code as Sona. But when you, th when you think about it, it's very different. I mean, this is uh, some ranged... Uh, AoE. 
And that's an execute. Like Sona, Sona's queue is basically meant to be a poke initially. It, it's a poke. And Sarah's queue is an execute. Like they are, in essence, literally the opposite. There are opposites. Poke and executes are literally opposites in design. And also, Sarah's queue is a wave clear ability. Sona cannot wave clear. That, that's the first big difference is that Sarah is designed to be a mid laner, a supportive mid laner, but she's supposed to be a mage. She, she can also be played in bot lane. Apparently, she can work as a support and she can probably work as a, as a mage in the bot lane, you know, as a carry mage in the bot lane. And I actually think that Sarah and Sona will work very well together. But as you will see, Seraphine works best. Uh, well, her kit synergizes very well with Enchanter supports like Sona. So if she is the support, she cannot, sh she cannot use that synergy. That's already another big difference. So the Q is a wave clear ability, and Sona cannot be a mid laner. She cannot be a solo laner in general because she has no wave clear, and that's that's already a big deal. That's a big difference. And we don't know how much, uh, how, how many times she can cast this. You know, we don't have cooldown, we don't have mana cost, we, we have nothing about this. Now, if we go to the W, I mean, yes, it heals and it shields, like Sona. Also, it speeds up, like Sona's E, but it's still very different because Sona, uh, besides her poke, is supposed to be a sustained champ. You know, she can sustain with heals. The thing is, Seraphine can only heal by herself uh, if she's using the echo, if she's using her passive, and then she can heal. And that's the thing, I I if Sona is already beside her, she can shield her, and then Sarah can uh, heal or potentially double heal. So, in that case, it's also very different. Yeah, it, it looks the same because it does the same thing, but the, the thing is, the, the, the paradigm behind this is very different. By default, it doesn't heal. She, she will not have as much sustain as uh, Sona has. And that's a, that's a big deal. No, her E... Her E is a CC. Like, Sona, Sona's only CC besides her ultimate is the power cord. Uh, the power cord on E. And that's a slow. Now, yes, the E also has a slow, but first of all, it's an AoE slow, so it's different, and it can also be a root or a stun. And that is also very different. Sona doesn't have any root or any stun besides her ultimate. Now, <coughs> when we look at the R, yes, it looks very similar. Obviously, it looks very similar. But first of all, you can see that Seraphine has a lot more cast time on it. And the use is very different. I mean, Senna is supposed to cast the ult immediately on a maximum of enemies, you know, have them grouped up, and then she can flash in, use it, and stun everyone. This, this one is supposed to be used uh, with some hard engage. It's supposed to, to not be the hard engage. It's a follow-up to the engage. That, that's why we see Leona. You know, Leona uh, dashes in, and then Seraphine can use it. So the, the use will not be the same. I mean, it's hard to say how long this ability is, but it's also relatively slow for an ultimate. You know, it's very much easier to uh, I mean, to dodge. And Sona's ult and to anticipate. So I don't think we can really say they will be the same. Another thing is that Sona, which many people may not know, is that Sona is a hyper carry support. You know, sh she's pretty weak early. I mean, she has some poke, but overall she's pretty weak early. But from the moment she has the, the third level on her ult, uh, she becomes a very spammy champion with a ton of healing, a ton of damage, and uh, a ton of movement speed. She is an hyper carry. We don't know that for Seraph. We have no idea if she will be uh, an early champ, a mid champ, or a late game champ. She could be any. 
uh, and that's <clears throat> that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that we have not we don't have enough information to really say that Seraphine is like Sona. I mean, yes, on paper you would say this is Sona's rework. You would say, okay, that can work. But in practice, it seems not to be the case. I go for Reef three, going to Reddit because he's apparently a very brave person. It says that he's looked at it, and that if you see it, I have played a ton of Seraphine internally, and I don't think she feels anything like Sona to actually play in game. And, you know, w w when you see this, you're absolutely wrong about this. That sounds like an excuse. There is an overlap of thematic, yeah. And this, this I kind of disagree, you know. Uh, second music jump, yeah, they're, they're too close. The problem is that they're close on too many levels at once. I think that's the biggest issue. Like, f for example, okay, uh, if you have uh, Tick Bilgewater, we have two champions there. They're, they're, uh, there is an undead, drowned, vengeful, underwater spirit who also has a grab. It's a support champ. Now, you might be thinking, okay, that's Spike, but that's also Nautilus. There is a very big thematic overlap. The thing is, People are fine with it because they're visually very distinct. I mean, you you have this kind of uh, slippery ghost and you have this uh, big titan, so they don't feel similar. And in gameplay, I mean, yes, they both have a grab, but they're very different in practice. And that, uh, I think, we should understand that it's probably the same for Seraphine. Maybe it's not as obvious. But I think that that's something we need to be uh, mindful about. And if we take... Let, let, let's take another example. That, that's one of the examples I, I prefer. Okay, let, let's take a champion from Targon. So you have this champion. It comes from Targon. She comes from Targon. She's based... Uh, her, her theme is an astral body. Now she has a light-themed debuff. She has... Uh, uh, empowered auto attacks. She has a W ability that's a defensive ability, uh, refreshing upon hitting enemies. You have uh, her E that's uh, a gap closer targeted on a champion. And you have her ultimate that's a circular AoE uh, C hard CC ability that deals damage. That's pretty specific. But Leona and Diana. Both share those things. On paper, they're extremely similar. But as you can see, you, you will understand that they're very different. I mean, visually, they're obviously very different. And I think that's the point, is that Seraphine and Sona are too visually identical. Because if they weren't, uh, no one would look at this and say, it's Sona V2. They would say, yeah, it's reminiscent of Sona, but they wouldn't say it's Sona V2. Uh, well, actually, they will probably still do, because uh, everything that looks remotely similar is obviously just uh, just the second version of any champion. Uh, remember, again, new Aatrox was considered just some kind of weird Riven initially, and as we all know, they're pretty much nothing alike in the end. So, <coughs> let's wait to have the actual numbers. Let's let's wait to test it, to, to see, okay, is it actually what we think it is? Before we say it's the same champion as another one. And finally, uh, I want to talk about uh, her aesthetic. You know, many people say, yeah, that does not look like Piltover. And I kind of agree, but I also kind of disagree on this. I mean, yes, pink hair, okay, but Vi also has pink hair. And I understand that it doesn't feel very much like Piltover, but when you look about when when you look at it, it's very much like Piltover. It's just more uh more fashion focused. You know, it, it's still very Victorian when you look at, at the skirt, at the corset, uh all of this it looks very much like Piltover. It just 
You have glitter. It, it's built over with glitter. Even her stage, that, that still looks very much like something you'd see in Piltover. The speakers are also very based on Piltover. All of this is very focused on Piltover. And <clears throat> I think it's fine because as I've seen somewhere else, I don't remember where, uh, on the Champion Insight, actually. Yes, that's it. So, they made, uh, they made Seraphine a Piltover champion because Piltover allows them to have something that's very modern in fields. And that makes sense. You know, and as they say, <coughs> here, what about the artist? You know, we've seen a lot of scientists in Piltover and so, but we've never seen any actual artists or musicians. So it makes sense that we have something that we haven't seen already. Something, a, a part of Piltover that is unlike the rest. You know, sh she is a pop star. That's, that's not a unique concept in itself. But for Piltover, that's new, that's different. And I, I, I'm going to take another example of why we shouldn't resist uh, expanding on this. When... So I've been playing League for a very long time. I, I started playing somewhere in Season 1. And I remember uh, Vice release. And when I heard Vice theme for the first time, I thought, that doesn't fit League at all. And I, I, I was kind of right, you know, it didn't. It absolutely didn't feel like League uh, on a musical uh, perspective. Uh, or, until then, all the themes were very symphonic, you know, they were based on heroic fantasy. Uh, and then suddenly Vice arrive. here comes Vi, and we have this, uh, this hard rock song that doesn't fit in anything that we've seen so far. But in the end, she became a great champion, and... Here Comes Vi is one of the most popular themes that we have. And it led to the introduction of Jinx. And, you know, when you say something doesn't fit in Runeterra, you know, it's not like something in Runeterra, you have to understand that Runeterra is extremely large in thematics. You have literally a barbarian king going into the fight bare chest with a gigantic sword. And on the opposite, in Piltover, you have this crazy girl blowing buildings with a rocket launcher. Like, these two things should be incompatible, but they're both in Rune Terra, and we accept it because that's what we're used to. And Seraphine, it's the same concept. It's something that's different. It expands on Piltover. Yes, it doesn't fit the current idea we have of Piltover, but it's not incompatible with it. It's just a new facet of it. And we shouldn't resist everything. Now you might be cynical and say, yeah, they just made Seraphine for KDA and then they tried to force it as a champion and maybe, maybe, maybe that's true. And I'm gonna say, so what? Even if it is. I mean, if the end result, if you, if you want to accept the end result as something that works, if you do not resist the idea, if it works, and if it's good, if Seraphine has a nice kit, if she's a fun champion to play, why should we uh, resist this idea? Why, why should we prevent this from happening? Why should we avoid this? There is a lot of potential with Seraphine. Uh, and I think we should just wait and see how that works out in practice. So yeah, that, that was me being the devil advocate for Seraphine because I've seen a lot, a lot of criticism and I'm kind of annoyed by how much backlash Riot uh, gets every time there is something that is not, uh, that does not meet the expectations of people. Not that it's not as good, but that it's different than what we expected. I mean, it's a pop star. She's gonna look like a pop star. And you, you can say all you want that it doesn't fit Runeterra. The fact is, she's in Runeterra. And that's how it is. So, I would say, even by definition, 
she fits rune terra because she's a part of it and it doesn't uh, prevent the rest from existing. It's not incompatible with the idea. And her kids. Really, please, just wait for actual numbers. Wait, wait to have actual information, what it feels like. Test it. Go to PBE. Normally, you all have access to PBE. Check her out. Uh, see if it actually feels like Sona. I don't think she will feel like Sona. I used to be a Sona main a long time ago. And I'm seeing this. It's reminiscent. Yeah, it, 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 it looks like Sona, but Leona looks like Diana, or probably the opposite, I guess. Diana feels like Sona on paper. Uh, feels like Leona on paper. And Pike would feel like Nautilus on paper. And Atrox, feel, Atrox feels like Riven on paper. I mean, Yasuo and Yone are meant to, to be pretty much the same in many ways. Uh, there is another example. Senna and Lucian also have a lot of abilities in common. I mean, in ID, their Q is pretty much mirroring each other. But you have to wait. No, no one would say that Senna and Lucian are the same champion. No one. No one even says that their Q is the same, even though they're literally meant to look the same. So please, just wait. Be prepared to accept the idea of what Seraphine is. 